and welcome to Superb Woman Sundays at 7. I'm your host, Janet Neal, the founder and queen bee at the Superb Woman Incorporated. I am so glad to, that you've joined us once again for another amazing show. So this week, as you see, I have two guests. And let me get to them just a minute. But before I get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about the Superb Woman and why I started the show. I believe that women have the power to change this world in an instant when we recognize it, when we believe in ourselves, when we take the time to step back and learn to be ourselves and not just do, 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 do. That's what a Superwoman does. And may I just say from personal experience, it is an unsustainable model. And so I started this show because I've been meeting superb women along my path who are wonderful examples of women who are doing amazing things, are very powerful, and it's because they've taken the time to understand who they are, and they have crafted and are living a life that supports that. And as a result, they're putting out positive energy for the world. And I don't know about you, but I think we all can use some more positive energy. So I am really grateful to have my two guests here today, Francesca Cavallo and Elena Favilli. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having us. Yes, I'm so glad that you're here. Now, you're going to, you, my audience, you're going to be very excited to hear about them and what they have just created. I learned about them um, I think it was probably their agent called me um, and told me that they have they were launching a book that was about um, girls stepping into their power. And the name of the book is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. But I want them to tell the story of how it came to be because um, they didn't just write a book. I mean, it is it's a whole story in itself. So as you might have heard, there were some accents there. So Elena and Francesca are both from Italy. And um, so how did you ladies come from Italy to the United States and get to this point where you're launching this amazing book? Yeah, we, we started in, in Milan in Italy in 2012. So it's been, yeah, a few years uh, already that we've been working together uh, with our company, which is called Timbuktu Labs. And we started um, in our kitchen, basically, as, um, as a side project. And we, we started to work on this idea. Um, back then, it was an idea for, a, for an iPad magazine for children, which was called Timbuktu Magazine. And that was actually the first iPad magazine launched in the app store. Uh, so we worked on that with, um, with a very small team and a small gr group of people, designers and illustrators from, um, from all over the world because uh, we, we already had this very international approach to uh, the, the product that we were building. And, and so when we launched the, this first product, Timbuk2, on the, uh, on the app store, we got tremendous reviews from magazines and newspapers uh, from all over uh, the globe. So including the U.S., of course, which was uh, the main market and mm -hmm. still is for us the main market. Um, so we realized that what started off as a passion project, as a side project, uh, really had the, uh, the possibility to become a real company. And so we, we started to think about how we can... Uh, you know how we could move that forward and um, uh, what we could do uh, to make it to make it grow and since I had previously studied in California at UC Berkeley one of my dreams was to go back to the US um, and try to start my own company and so this you know initial product that we had uh, gave us all the energy and uh, yeah, an enthusiasm uh, to, to try to do that. So we applied to um, several different startup competitions uh, in Italy first. And, and we won like most of them. <laughs> and, and one of them uh, brought us to San Francisco for um, about for, for a month as a prize. Um, and, and so during that month, during that 
30, yeah, 30 day period, we uh, started interviewing with several, uh, you know, investors, accelerators, and just in, yeah, a little over a month, we, we were selected by 500 startups, which is one of the main incubators, accelerators in, in Silicon Valley, in Mountain View. Mm -hmm. um, and we became the first uh, Italian startup to be part of their program. And so that, of course, uh, gave us a great advantage in, in uh, connecting with more investors, uh, building a network of mentors and, and early adopters in, in the US. And, and basically it helped us <clears throat> start our company uh, off the ground in San Francisco. So, uh, over the past four years, since uh, we launched Timbuktu, um, we've been working on different children's products, and some of them uh, were completely digital, uh, like the iPad magazine, for example, or many other apps that, that we built. Um, and then last year, we decided to um, go back to where we started from basically, which is publishing, children's publishing mm -hmm. and physical books. And uh, cause we, we saw uh, like a strong, uh, um, a huge opportunity there to, to innovate. Um, and so we, we decided to, to, to create a new book and to launch it in a completely different way. So instead of going to, you know, the traditional route, uh, pitching publishers and trying to, uh, find a publisher who wants to publish your book. We right. went the crowdfunding route, and so we uh, designed and, and launched a crowdfunding campaign that was extremely successful and that raised over 1.2 million dollars overall. Okay, let me just stop you there. <laughs> so, crowdfunding that raised over 1.2 million dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> phenomenal. Having done a crowdfunding campaign, I know how difficult that is. So kudos to just for the crowdfunding itself, that that's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. <laughs> in fact, it's the, the most crowdfunding original book in history. So <laughs> yeah, wow. that's really remarkable. So yeah, so continue. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so well, I mean, that puts us where, where we are now, uh, which is, um, with uh, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, which is now our main product, of course. Um, and the campaign um, basically just, we just start, we just ended fulfilling all the orders that came through the campaign. Now we have just launched our new e-commerce website. Uh, we're selling everywhere on Amazon as well. So it's, uh, now it's a completely new, uh, new business for us. We have, uh, you know, it's a physical product. So you have something to, uh, you, you need an inventory, you need to <laughs> manufacture it, you need to ship it to, to people. So um, the past few months, we've been busy at work on all these different aspects of the business that um, were completely new to us and that now are such you know, an important part of what we're doing. Absolutely. Well, it's fabulous. Show us the cover of the book. So it's, uh, yeah, here it is. And, and show the side, show how big it is. So it's a, it's a real book. Um, yeah, it's 224 full color pages. So yeah, it was quite a, yeah, we, we, we were quite busy in the past. Part. Yeah, absolutely. It is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful book. Um, so, and, and tell the audience a little bit more about what it's about. I mean, good night stories for rebel girls. What is that? You know, how, how did you even come up with this idea? And then tell us what it, what it is all about. So the, the book is a, a collection of 100 uh, tales, uh, each inspired to the life and adventure uh, and adventures of one extraordinary woman from the present or the past. Mm. So in the uh, Kickstarter campaign, we said from Elizabeth I to Serena Williams, to give an idea, not just about the, the, the fact that uh, the, the, the book talks about women of the past and women of the present, but also about the range of uh, characters from a variety of fields. Uh -huh. So there are tales about mathematicians, architects, politicians, uh, biologists, uh, trombonists, judges. <laughs> we really cared that the book could express uh, the, the, 
the the width of the con contributes that these women uh, gave to the to human history and uh, so uh, and we also cared that the book um, could express uh, a variety of backgrounds also in terms of like geography so there are women from all over the world from uh, Africa, African countries, from Japan, from Korea, from, of course, the United States, from Canada, from Italy. Uh, uh, so it, we really, it's a, you know, diversity is not something that you usually encounter in children's media. Children's media is usually quite conservative in terms of like, uh, the kind of characters that uh, children's, uh, children get to see. And so we, we, want, we wanted the book to be disruptive on a, different levels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So what is it in your background besides the, um, from a technology perspective, but why this theme? What was it that in your background that made this really resonate with you, want, uh, make you want to bring this into fruition? You know, it was a, a slow process of uh, realization. Mm. <laughs> Basically, what we realized is that when we were in school, um, we didn't, we never thought that uh, being women could be a limit to anything. Because as long as you're in college, we both were students at the top of our class. We, we did great in exams and we had higher marks than uh, most of our classmates. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it just made sense. I mean, we, we really enjoyed studying and we, we enjoyed what we were doing. And then you come out of college and it's kind of hard to, because you find a different world. But at the beginning, it's hard to realize what's going on because of course, uh, if you are, uh, I mean, if you're, if you love to learn, you always think that whatever opportunity you miss, you are the problem. Mm. So, and it's kind of uh, challenging at the beginning to come to the realization that there are uh, external obstacles to uh, achieving, like to, to even to uh, like meeting the same opportunities that your uh, male counterparts uh, meet. So um, it was a slow process for us. So it started, uh, I mean, my career started in theater. So I graduated as a stage director. So. Okay completely different field mm -hmm. and Elena worked as a journalist. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we had this company and we came to the Silicon Valley where you expect to find the true meritocracy. This is the, the narrative around the Silicon Valley experience. Mm -hmm. And still it was kind of, we felt out of place a lot of times, like we didn't belong to that world and uh, somehow we didn't fit in there. Wow. But still, the thing was that we really liked what we were doing and we were good at it uh, because we won a lot of awards. So we were like, th there was this kind of cognitive dissonance between the fact that we were actually good at what we were doing and still it was like the environment was telling us that we didn't fit in there. Wow. So yeah. we believe that a lot of uh, women at that point, and it's totally understandable, some, I mean, of course, having a startup, it's very challenging because it's a really like a roller coaster. There are moments of profound desperation where you need to find reasons to stay in that position yep. and to hope that it, it will get better. And it's like the whole environment around you reinforces the uh, thought that, no, you shouldn't stay there because that's not your place. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, we we uh, arrived at a point where uh, in one of the office spaces that we uh, shared, uh, we had this person that was responsible of the program that we were in. Um, that was like every day uh, you, we were trying to find a new product to launch, and uh, we were thinking already of a, of a physical product. This was a couple of years ago. And this person, but that, and he was the responsible of the program that we were in, in the office space that we were in, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Every day he would tell us, no, don't do it. Physical products are too complicated for you because then you have to ship it to people. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're proud and uh, we have a lot of ambition, clearly. 
So the first reaction that we naturally have when somebody tells us that you, we cannot do something is that we want to do that. Exactly. But <laughs> even then, by consistently telling a person that something is not for them every day, it's just a lie to say that that doesn't affect you. So we had to, like, we decided, we were at a critical point in, our, in the history of our company. And uh, we decided that uh, at that point that San Francisco wasn't for us. And we decided to move to LA and we started working uh, uh, from home. So we didn't have an office anymore and we cut down all expenses and we said, okay, let's. And this thing happened that things turned on their head. Uh, because we were not exposed anymore to that kind of, so we were just focused on the work. Yeah. And uh, Los Angeles is, a, I mean, with all the problems that uh, the entertainment world has, it's still way more diverse than San Francisco uh, tech mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was for us, a, uh, like, it, I, I'm, I'm saying these things because it's like, how long does it take to realize that, there is something that is hurting you and you don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it takes time to realize what exactly that is. And uh, so we, we came to the realization that the thing that could really um, help us uh, keep the enthusiasm to keep working in the company was something that we believed could really express a personal struggle and um, kind of, um, turn it into something positive and constructive, something that could really help other people mm -hmm. not face the same obstacles that we had faced. And so uh, the idea of working on a newsletter was at the time called Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls came about. Okay. And so who did that newsletter go to? Um, so it went to our initial user base and then we, we use that as a way to week after week uh, increase our following. So we would publish a story, we would send it out through our newsletter and we would send it out on our blog as well. Nice. And, and, and it, this was a way of course to increase our user base uh, and then to test the stories that we were right. working on. And then that would eventually become part of the book that we were working on. So it was a great customer research tool that we used for about five, six months before the launch of the campaign. And I think it, we, it played an essential role in shaping the campaign and in building this momentum with our audience who was following us week after week. And that when we launched was basically ready to uh, jump on board and, and buy the book and spread the word. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's, um, I love your story because it's so, it, you know, even though the specific experience is different um, than something that I've gone through or other women have gone through, the underlying experience is the same. It's that um, I loved what you said about being in school and doing better than, you know, most of your classmates and feeling like I can do anything and then getting out into the real world and going, Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> what changed? Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Right, exactly. And and how you know if unconsciously you know it can wear down on you when you start to doubt yourself. Um, and so I'm very grateful that you you realized that and and that you had each other to kind of bolster each other up there and, <laughs> and bring that forward. And I love the idea that you are highlighting these women from so many different areas and different times and, um, and experiences, but it's just, it's so much like what I talk about. It's, you know, these are women who understand, have taken the time to understand who they are and what's important to them and what their gifts are and look at the things that they have accomplished as a result. So you are two wonderful examples of the same kind of thing. You are two wonderful examples of superb women, and I'm I'm so grateful to have uh, gotten introduced to you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, you know, I ask all of my guests um, the same questions, and so um, the one thing that I always say is, we cannot do this by ourselves. Obviously, you have each other, but who else has helped you on your path to get you to where you are today? 
Well, um, before uh, coming to Silicon to California, and yeah, the first place we went to was Silicon Valley. We had met a lot of investors, mm -hmm. and uh, had received a lot of uh, pats on our back, mm -hmm. and no money. Yeah. <laughs> Until we met with this incredible investor whose name is Christine Tsai, mm -hmm. and she is a founding partner at 500 Startups. And uh, after seeing our product and after a meeting of 20 minutes, she decided to become our first investor mm -hmm. and to uh, take Timbuktu in the 500 Startups uh, Accelerator program. And given the prestige of the program, oh, many of the investors that had turned us down decided to come back to us with a... Interesting. So she was the first investor to believe in our mission and in our... Mm -hmm. uh, capability to execute on, on the mission. Mm -hmm. She's definitely a person that had a crucial uh, importance in the history of our company. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great. And you're right. It takes that first person. Um, and um, and that can be a tough one to get, but that's great that you got that. Yeah. So, um, another thing that I talk about is that I have noticed that superb women have learned to let go of the shoulds in the in their life. Is there a should that you have let go of? Many. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an example. <laughs> uh, I mean, when you are in the startup world, uh, there are tons of shoulds. Mm -hmm. Like you should build, for example, uh, being a media company in Silicon Valley, People are all about you should build a platform for other people uh, for other people's content, and we were like, but we are very good at creating uh, top class content, and they're like, it doesn't matter, content is not scalable. This is what you should do. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the, like in the history of the company, this is like the the biggest example, and it's out of frustration that we decided to move away from Silicon Valley and to come to Los Angeles, that is mm. clearly a city that's more content friendly, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, when you hear you should focus on a platform as opposed to content from 50 investors, of course you start doubting yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, yeah, content doesn't scale. But then when you think about it, there's nothing that scales more than content because once a book is created, I mean, there's really, it's way cheaper to keep producing it than to keep a platform alive. So it's, it, I mean, of course, these people were speaking from their experience. They didn't mean to hurt us in any way. They were genuinely telling us what they thought we should do. Right. And of course, they were not in our shoes they didn't think how we think. Right. So to have the courage to kind of uh, understand that you receive a lot of advice and it's good to seek advice. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, no one can know exactly what you have in mind. Yeah. Even if you're good at explaining it because they don't know all the resources that you have. Mm -hmm. You're the only person that can... So to let go of the shoulds is also to kind of trust have that kind of trust that you can execute on a vision and that you believe uh, that 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 vision is valuable um, and always let the vision dictate what your next step will be rather than uh, the external circumstances because if you think uh, to uh, create something because then investors will come. So if you think about what you're building from the perspective of an investor and from that alone, mm -hmm. it's very likely that we, you will lose motivation and you, will lose, uh, you, you won't be in touch with the, with the reason why you are doing the product. Mm -hmm. So to let go of the shoulds, we believe it's... Uh, it's very important to be in touch with the w why you're doing a particular thing and why that that's important to you specifically. Absolutely. And I, I love, thank you for saying that because um, that is something I actually have tacked up uh, above my desk, you know, don't forget the why um, because that really is the key um, to keeping you going on those days when, um, and we all have them when you're like, why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, if and, 
I understand that, that it's vital. Yes, and it's hard to find it out. So when you hear uh, other people saying it, you're like, oh, they know what their why is. And that's a dynamic thing. Yeah. So it's not static and it's not uh, something that you find once and for all. Mm -hmm. It is important to put the effort in to like identify what your why is, but also to be open to the fact that we are like living beings. Yeah. Things change. Yeah. So uh, it is important to acknowledge that your why will change and that you will find better ways to formulate and you will discover also by doing things what your your profound why is exactly exactly so what is your hope um that comes out of this book for your readers well there's there's many hopes uh that are you know part of this book for us and but i think the biggest one of all probably is um, that you know young girls who who are going to read this book will find more more strength and and more um, courage to to try and do new things and and things that are usually not expected uh, from them so uh, I think this will serve as as an inspiration to to dream bigger than what you usually are expected to just because you're a, you're a woman. And mm. so I, I would say, yes, this is like the biggest, the biggest expectation that we have. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think you're, you're on the path. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I had mentioned this to you, Francesca, that uh, I was a children's literature major in college and a former teacher and, um, and so you're kind of combining all of my passions right here in this one book. Uh, so I'm very grateful that you have taken the time to do that. And I can't wait to get my own copy of it. So what's next for you two? <laughs> so uh, Rest, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so now, well, now the main focus, of course, is to scale the, the company that, <laughs> that we've built. Now we finally have a product that is, selling um all over the world constantly so uh the challenge the biggest challenge is to really scale the company right now and so that's where uh, all our resources are uh at the moment and but for us like this book has always been just um we've always looked at this as the first you know the stepping stone of a bigger consumer media brand of a lifestyle brand mm -hmm. um, that will keep producing and releasing new products sometimes physical products sometimes digital products um, mm -hmm. targeting young girls um, so empowering products for girls and of course the publishing and the media world is um, where we come from is uh, what we will keep uh, working on and we are already thinking about uh, launching uh, a new website connected to this, uh, maybe uh, a podcast series. So we're, there's so many pieces that um, will will become part of of the of the Rebel Girls uh, media property. And and we couldn't be we couldn't be more excited than <laughs> than now. Uh, so, so yes, there's, uh, it's exciting because when you find something that resonates so much with, um, with, with an audience and when you tapped into a clearly underserved market as the one of, you know, parents, uh, with, with young children looking for empowering content for their girls, right. then in me, it, it, like suddenly the, the, uh, the whole world of opportunities opens up in front of your eyes. And, and so there's so many, of course, there's so many products that you can uh, think of, that you can create and, and, and that, that you can launch to, to serve that, that same community and that same passionate audience. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So how can people um, get your book again? Tell us how to, to get it. So they can get it now on our own uh, e-commerce website, which is rebelgirls.co. Um, and then, of course, they can get it on Amazon uh, as well. Okay, excellent. And we will have a slide at the end of this um, for those of you um, who forgot. 
um, and didn't have a chance to write it down, it'll be coming up. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Yes. So I just want to thank you both so much for sharing your story, story personal and your stories <laughs> with all of us. And I wish you all the best in the successful launch of this. And I will look forward to many future products coming from you, Rebel Girls, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank Bye. you, audience, for watching. And stay tuned for next week for another show with yet another superb woman. And until then, have a superb week. <laughs> Bye.